Okay. We're going to talk about naming amines. Now, you've already met that there are effectively three different types of amines. You can have a primary amine, like this one. We have a carbon attached to a nitrogen, and the nitrogen is attached to two hydrogens. You can have a secondary amine, though, where this, instead of a hydrogen here, it's attached to another carbon or another alkyl group. And you can have a tertiary amine where this is there are no hydrogens on this nitrogen and it's attached to uh, two alkyl groups or two carbon containing compounds. Okay. Now we're just going to look at how to name these compounds in this uh, in this video. And the problem with naming amines is that there's probably two systems that you can actually use. Okay. Um, I'm going to teach you the system that works for most of, of uh, well, works for the same way that you've met other compounds being named. But I'll also just briefly introduce you to the idea that we can do two different things. Okay. Now, the first way is not the way that I'd like you to to name compounds or name amines, and that is to treat the amine as the most important thing in the world. Okay, and in which case we are take uh, effectively on this compound here, we are adding an ethyl side chain onto the amine. So this is commonly known as ethyl amine. Now, what we can also do though, and it's the way I'd like you to think about this, is to think about the amine group as being attached to the hydrocarbon backbone of the chain. Okay? It's much more consistent than what you've already learned, and it's still perfectly valid. Okay? So in this case, we have two carbon chains, and we have an amine, and the amine is on carbon number one. Remember, we number so that we have the lowest numbers. So this compound is one amino ethane. Okay, so we're just basically saying we have an amino group, that is this NH2 group, on the first carbon of ethane. Okay. Now this naming system works for more complicated example. So here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, a six carbon chain, and we have an uh, amine on the third carbon. So this is three amino hexane. Okay, and here we have a carbon chain that has one, two, three, four, five carbons in its longest chain. We have an amine on carbon 2, and we have methyl group on carbon 3. Remember that we order the substituents of a chain alphabetically. So we have 2 amino, 3 methyl, and it's got 5 carbons in the chain, so it's pentane. So it's 2 amino, 3 methyl pentane. Uh, the other way of naming these is to essentially look for the longest single chain that has the amine at the end of it and then number that, which is a much more complicated system. So in this case, I'll, I'll just give you one example because you may meet it, but I'm not going to ask you for it in an exam. Okay? So the longest chain that this is connected to is, is this one here. Okay? So one, two, three, four carbons. So and we have two methyl groups off of this. So this is carbon one, so we have one, two, so it's up one, two, dimethyl, butyl, amine. As I said at the start, that's a much more complicated way of thinking about things. And it's counterintuitive to the way that you've been taught how to name other compounds. Okay? So, 
I would encourage you to use both both nomenclature systems are correct. Okay? And if in an exam you were to name this compound either of those names, then they would both be perfectly valid. Okay. What you can't do is mix and match the names. Okay. So you couldn't call this uh, methyl bromo uh, sorry methyl uh, amino pentane or something strange like that. Okay. You can't mix and match them. They are distinct systems, but they both work. Okay. Um, I would prefer it, and it's uh, much easier for you to learn the, the simpler using amino as a side chain. Okay, let's make this a little bit more complicated and instead we're now going to deal with secondary and tertiary amines in this. Okay, so if we... I'm just going to take, take this one away. So we have this compound here and that's the amino hexane. Let's say we make the secondary amine of that. Okay, so we now made we put a methyl group onto this amine. Okay. Now that's going to change the name. Okay. And the way that we do that is pardon me. Is to say that we have a we are attaching a methyl group to the N of this three amino hexane. And we do that by just saying N methyl three amino hexane. Okay. Now the N just means it's a it's a methyl group on this nitrogen. Okay. And then the rest of the name remains the same. Now let's say we take this compound and instead uh, and we now take so this was a secondary amine and we make this into a tertiary, uh, a tertiary amine. So we now got three things attached to this. So we have a methyl group and a lethyl group and then we have this long chain. Okay. Now what we do is we again we're going to use this N type notation. We have an ethyl group and we have a methyl group. You know the rule. You always start alphabetically. So we say N ethyl, N methyl, 3 amino hexane. It's easy as that. Okay. We're not trying to overly complicate things. Okay. We just keep simple groups and we use this. What are we attaching to the nitrogen? We're attaching an ethyl group, a methyl group. And that is attached to this hexane chain where the amine is on the third carbon. Okay. So that's how we name amines. Okay. It's a little bit more complicated given the nature of, of the amine and that it can make more bonds than for instance an oxygen can. Uh, but the rules the rules do follow what we've learned before. Okay.